go that way. Where's the president? Um, He's in Las Vegas. I don't know where she is. There is a time. Everybody's coming out of classes, and they're gonna they're gonna get here. It might take a minute, but we're gonna worship the Lord today. For this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will worship because it's a choice that we're gonna make, and we're gonna make the right choice today. So let's worship Him. Forever proclaim, 
magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. For who is like our Lord and King? His glory and his name is to be exalted above the heavens. For the rest of my life, 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 forever proclaim, forever proclaim, he's great, he's great, he's great, he's great, he's The Holy Ghost to from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I felt the Spirit moving all over me. Oh, I got the river of living water. 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 If you don't believe I've been redeemed. Follow me down to the Jordan. Oh, it's in my mind, my 
in a totally different place and I thank the Lord for that every day and I thank him every day that I I stay in this place and thank you God thank you so much Lord hallelujah and it is the greatest feeling ever you know what else he did he took off running around this place like a bullet he had never felt something like this that's what this Holy Ghost experience does to you Oh, you should have been there when I prayed through. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. Kind of like today. It's on the my feet. Woo! Spirit moving all over me. Oh, yeah. Woo! I don't know about you, but I'm hungry for that today. Scooter, take
as you supposed because they were talking about alcohol. But they are filled with His Spirit. And when you are full of His Spirit, it's going to flow out. It's going to go somewhere. You can't contain this Spirit. You can't contain Him. You might try. You might try to act all sophisticated and make yourself look pretty and look good. But when you get full of this Spirit, it's going to move. It's going to move somewhere. Something's going to happen. Welcome. Welcome to Pentecost at its best. We say we're the church where the book of Acts continues. That means healing. That means deliverances. That means people are going to walk out different than they came. No more. Okay, imagine yourself as a seed thrower. And you went out and you spread seed. We spread seed. Now then, what we do is we rejoice over the seed that we spread. Because the Word says, He gives the increase. Not me. I can't make it grow. I can't produce fruit. But what I can do is spread the seed. And that's what we did yesterday. So you know what? Today, you need to be rejoicing. The Bible says we're going to be rejoicing, bringing in our sheaves with us. I feel so good. I feel so good in my spirit. Don't wait. Don't wait. She may weigh 90 pounds, but there's a lot of Holy Ghost right here. There's a lot of Holy Ghost in that 90 pounds. It don't take a big castle to fill a Holy Ghost. <laughs> How much God do you want today? 
How much Holy Ghost do you want today? It's kind of like there's this beautiful package and the Lord is saying here and you're going, no, I don't want a pretty package. My word. I want everything he's got. I want everything he's got for me.
We're going to encase our drummer. This changes your life. This changes your world. Men, you find somebody to pray with. Ladies, you find somebody to pray with. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. God, I want everything you have for me. Don't leave me out of anything you have. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Brother Gabe, he loves Rebel Sata Yada. Devil, you're a liar and you're a thief and you're a robber. You stole it, all you're going to get. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. God, I want everything you have. I want everything you have. Jesus name in Jesus name that's it go ahead in Jesus name Taylor oh in Jesus name I need some ladies over here over here oh thank you Jesus oh thank you Jesus because of your mercy God because of your mercy, God. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, do a word. Oh, thank you, Lord. You so Yes, Jesus. That's right, Sister Rachel. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Oh, clap your hands. Clap your hands, all you people. And the Bible says, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Something about overcoming every obstacle. There is nothing in the kingdom that you do not overcome through the blood. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise all over the house. Raise your hands and love him. Love him, love him, love him. Oh, something 
about his presence. I had a lady pastor come here one time. And she said these words. She said, Pastor, I can go all over this city. And she was a pastor in her own church. I can go all over this city. But sir, I want to tell you something. I can feel God anywhere any better than this place right here. Church, it's not a special people. It's a people that have sold out. And they're going to worship God through everything. They will not let obstacles slow them down. Hell could come against their home. They're still going to the house of God. And they're still going to worship the Creator. Give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. He's worthy of it. Woo! Are you ready to have church today? Are you ready to have a move of the Holy Ghost in the house? Hallelujah. You know what? We could change the order of the service. We can put our programs before God. We can have flag dancing and all that stuff. And we can have some good programs. But I want to tell you something. Programs will never take away from the anointing of God. I'd rather have the anointing of God and let Him have His way than all the programs in the world. Give me God. Give me His presence. Give me His anointing. Woo! Hallelujah. You may return back to your seat if you would like. Hallelujah. This church service is not over with. This church service is probably getting its second wind. Hallelujah, God. Oh, Lord, we love you. We praise you. There's nothing like this apostolic message. When I go and talk to people, I tell them, come to our church. It's the best worship and church in town. And I'm not afraid to say that because I've been to them. Praise God. I've been to them. A lot of them have their programs and I'm not trying to put anything down or anybody. But what you, des what you need to desire more than anything, I've got to get into his presence. Because without getting into his presence, transformation does not happen. You'll go home the same as you were when you came. Your goal must be this. Listen to me. Your goal must be one ultimate thing. I will leave this place with something that I did not come with. I will leave this place changed. You may not be totally transformed. You may not totally be changed like you want to be. But you're on your way of process. I will leave here with something today under my belt. And I've made up my mind that I'm not going to leave until I get something from God. I don't care if it's a teeny bit. You can still walk out and say I'm better than I was when I came. And if you come to this church and you're not better when you leave, either I haven't done my job, the church hadn't done its job, or you have not done your job. Somebody failed in the process. Amen. But let me tell you, we've got a Jesus that can come on the scene. And honey, when he gets done, there is no slack in his promises. Clap your hands one more time. First of all, I want to praise everybody for the event that went on yesterday. Uh, Leanne and Shad McIntosh, you did a great job of getting this thing together and your helpers. And I'm not going to mention any names because I'll probably miss somebody. But all of the ones that really, they folded clothes, they washed clothes, they worked tremendously hours. What you, uh, what you saw yesterday is the reaping, but you didn't see the sowing. 
the sewing was loads after loads after loads after loads of clothes and it didn't take two days to do it. It probably took a couple weeks to wash all the clothes that they actually put out there to give away yesterday. Boxes and boxes and boxes. I've got a list I'm going to read in a minute. <laughs> Elizabeth is a professional clothes wash people. And, and Sylvia and Michelle. <laughs> Sylvia, Michelle. And, uh, I want you to say Dad a few. Why don't you? For the first time in his life. <laughs> That was the first time he's ever. Now, when he comes clothes. in there and has dirty clothes, well, you can wash them just as good yeah. as I can. I'm You're like, experienced. You're better than me. <laughs> you did like 40 loads. That's <laughs> but all these ladies and, and young men did a tremendous job of getting this thing together. And uh, I want to let you know, I, I, do, I think they deserve a standing ovation. And church members, I'm talking to you today. If you missed this uh, event yesterday and you, you just chose to do other things, um, you miss God. I'm just going to say that you miss God. Nothing comes more important than kingdom things. Don't ever put programs, things before God. Always put him first. And then everything else behind it secondary. And I promise you, you'll be, you'll be much ahead at the end of the game. Praise God. Amen. We're planting seed every day. Just remember that. You're planting seed. And it's so easy to plant, but it's so hard to reap when we plant wrong things. I understand that. Many had to work. Some of them had plans. I'm, I'm you know, exempting you from that. But if you could go, you sure missed a good time. I will say that. And uh, I enjoyed myself, and, uh, but untold hours upon hours were behind all of this. Had a hundred, you want to say something? I had a, something. I want you to take it, because it's your baby. Go okay, um, I just wanted to go through real quick. Matthew 9 and 36 says, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. We understand that we have a shepherd, but the people that we serve in this city have no one to lead them. We have a leaderless country right now, and there's not much that they can look up to. And that's our, that's our mission, is for them to know that, um, that there is something. There is a, heart, a hurt, broken, and dying world that needs to know there's hope for them, too. Have they heard of Jesus? Most have, but have they known about this Holy Ghost experience that sets people free? Probably not. They probably had some touch of religion in their life, some form of religion, but our mission is to show them that there is a lot more to God. And I thank y'all for all going. I just wanted to real quick um, name off everybody that helped. The food table, Sister Nancy, Sister Chandler, Jeremy, Brandon, Misty, Scooter, John, Josh, Cheryl, and Caitlin, Gabe, Jason, Clothing Table, Katrina, Elizabeth, Jamie, Tania, Michelle Meyer, Suzanne, uh, Registration, uh, Shan, and Michelle Diaz. Y'all did an excellent job trying to catch people. <laughs> they're, they're trying to get right by you, and Shan was like, wait, 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 I've got something for you. <laughs> um, preaching, speaking, advertising, passing out cards, praying for people. Um, Shad, uh, Pastor Nixon, and the men of Freedom Temple Church, uh, pra Pastor uh, Chandler, uh, Pastor Brad Horner of uh, Jesus Life Center, um, Sister Chandler, uh, Marilyn, um, Taylor, Cartwright, everybody tried to, t to talk to people and not just let them come, you know, go through, you know, but tried to talk to people. There was a lot of prayer for people yesterday. That was, that was probably the most important thing was to catch them. There was a man that was down at the road when me and, um, <clears throat> who was I with? Caitlin. We were down there doing the sign at the front of the road, and a man was walking through the parking lot. He was coming from Waterburger and going toward the bank over there. And he was just walking by, and I said, hey, we got, we got free food, uh, hot dogs and cookies. He said, well, I'm not really in the mood for, you know, any food or cookies. I said, would you like prayer? He said, yes, I would. And he walked up there, and Pastor Nixon's group prayed for him. And, and he walked away with tears streaming down his face. And I was like, I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> you know, I was like, would you like prayer? I don't even know why I said that. <laughs> and he said, yes. There are people that need what we have. 
if we'll just say it, sometimes they're waiting for somebody, you know, they're waiting for somebody to come to them and say something. Help me. That's what they're saying. I need something. There's nobody that I can turn to. And even though that was like a, you know, we're thinking, well, we're feeding the flesh. Guess what? They have needs. They have needs. And are we, are we, how do we reach them except to reach them through their needs, you know? Sometimes that's the, that's the, the gateway in. When I have a flyer in my hand, they don't want my flyer, but they do want my Lunchable or my Popsicle. So going, going door to door, we've done it, and it didn't work a lot of times. Maybe if we had something in our hand, it would. You know what I'm saying? People will open the door if they think you're gonna, you're gonna, you have something to offer them instead of them feeling like you're trying to get something from me or you're trying to, you know, you're trying to sell me something. I don't want to sell them something. I want to give them something. Okay, very, very important. The Kitty Corral Babysitting Club. They were so important yesterday. Sister Heather, um, <laughs> Sister Christine, and Maura, very important. Anybody else that I forgot that helped y'all, or was that it? That helped y'all with the Kitty Corral? Maura, okay, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Is there an empty bottle of NyQuil here somewhere? <laughs> Um, the sign holders, uh, Brother Scooter and Sophia and Caitlin, and then a big thank you to um, Taylor and Michelle Meyer for taking lots of pictures, lots and lots of pictures. Y'all did great. Thank you for doing that. We want to document what we did. Keep, keep sharing it. You know why? We're not bragging. We're showing other people, other churches, you can do this too. Are we any big deal? No, but they can do it. We didn't spend that much money, maybe a little bit. But, you know, other churches that are small, they need to know you can do it. It didn't take us a lot. It was one Saturday and about 39 other days <laughs> before that. But, you know, it's not bragging. It's showing people you can do this too. And, uh, and also showing people in our community that we're, we're doing something besides just trying to get people to come, you know, come to our church. You know, we want them to come here, but. Uh, thank you to the setup folks, Brother Chad and the men and the ladies who set up in the rain. Thank you. Y'all all deserve a big old hand. All right. After all that good uh, praise report, it's time for us to come into our other part of sacrifice, and that's uh, the giving part. Amen. So if uh, everybody will stand, we'll give to the Lord, and as the Lord has blessed you, Lord, I ask you right now to bless each and every soul in this building, God. I ask you, Lord, to touch their homes, to bless them financially, spiritually, mentally, physically, Lord. God, that you allow your fruit to grow, Lord. And God, we trust in you in all things. Lord, allow us to give out of faith. God, allow us to trust in you in all things, Lord. God, I ask you to bless them in Jesus' name.
Amen, amen. I can definitely feel the spirit of the Holy Ghost in this place today. If you can't, uh, uh, just just push a little further. You'll you'll begin to feel it. So, uh, I want to go over the announcements with you real quick. Uh, Monday, let's not forget we always got our Axe and Anger Management classes. Axe is our alcohol chemical treatment uh, series. If you deal with any kind of struggles with alcohol, chemicals, or drugs, or whatever it may be, maybe you have a rage of anger. Maybe you need, uh, we also have our divorce care. If you've been through a serious relationship, been hurt, have it at 7 p.m. The Axe and Anger Management starts at 6. Also have an end time Bible study taught by Brother John. Brother John Castle, back there in the sound booth. It's a great deal. If you've, never, if you've ever been curious about the end times, that's a good, good class for you to go to and check that out. Uh, at 7 p.m., we always have our family prayer and uh, parenting class and also divorce care. Like I said, if you've been through a bad relationship, that's a good one. Maybe you just want some insight on parenting. That's uh, also a good class. Uh, Sister Sham, my wife, she teaches the class. Uh, Wednesday, you got sign practice. All the people that are in the sign team. Uh, 6 p.m. sign practice. Thursday, the Zion Music Conference. Uh, don't forget about that. Those of you that are going to that, it's at Katy, at the Pentecostals of Katy. Uh, college and Career has a hyphen event in Dallas. Don't forget about that. That's Friday, the, October the 17th. Get with uh, David and Sarah. I know they're not here today, but get with one of them, and uh, they'll be able to talk to you about that. Uh, also, we got the... Uh, Next Sunday, we have a Kids Church Revival Sunday. Uh, all the kids in here, if you want to come and enjoy that, uh, we always have a good time during the Kids Church Revival. If uh, I heard that if Professor is off, he's going to try to make it. So kind of kind of be fun with him. The uh, musicians, I guess, have practice on after prayer on Monday, October the 20th. 24th, we have ladies' game night at Misty's house on uh, Friday the 24th. Uh, don't have a time with that, but if you'll get with her, I'm sure she can help you. Sister Misty is the hostess over there waving at you. Uh, men's outing, Brother John's house, is Saturday uh, the 25th at 4 p.m. Uh, those of you that are against guns and stuff, uh, you can bring a rod and reel. I'll be out there fishing. <laughs> Not against guns and stuff, so I'll, I'll, we're going to be shooting some guns, is what he said, right? Anyways, give it Brother John, and uh, yes, that's, that's last time we had a blast, and uh, a lot of us didn't leave till pretty late. Matter of fact, some of us called in to church the next day, but now I'm messing with you. <laughs> so anyways, uh, let's not have that. We're men, and we, we should be the leaders of our homes and leaders to our families, and uh, it's very important for you to try to make it. Friday, October the 31st, I'm excited about this, it's our Fall Fest, um, anybody excited about that, that's going to be a really good event, uh, usually on Friday, October the 31st, people celebrate Halloween, we always try to do something a little different, this so happened this year, it fell on the calendar on Halloween, and uh, it's the day that we had available, so we are going to do a trunk or treat, have you ever heard of a trunk or treat? They're very fun. Uh, I've heard of a lot of wonderful ideals already. And uh, on this trunk or treat, you're just going to dress the trunks of your car, the back of your cars up, and then we're going to hand out candy and snacks or whatever you want to do. Uh, so that's going to be awesome. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have uh, we're going to have a bounce house, right? You said, and uh, going to have games. Uh, going to have a dr dog dress contest, and huh? A pet parade. We're gonna have a pet parade, and uh, we're gonna have a lot of uh, we're gonna have some food, a lot of fellowship. We love the fellowship, and uh, we love some food. So try to dress up as uh, as nice as you can. Not try not to be scary. We like to have a good time. We don't want to scare the kids away. We want to make sure they have a good time and see that um, we love them and everything. So the uh, Preston's baby shower is gonna be November the first. Uh, you would if we could have everybody please join us and help celebrate uh, their baby coming on the way it's going to be November the 1st at 2 p.m. and I 
guess that's going to be here. I was going to say, but I guess that's going to be here. So, anyways, that's the announcements. If you have any questions on any of this, see somebody that knows. You know, uh, I just read what's on the list. So. There's plenty of people out here that knows, trust me. Uh, anyways, we thank you. And right now, I want to uh, turn it over to my pastor. It's a pastor appreciation month. And earlier, I heard him say he's a lifesaver. So if you, if you need a lifesaver, he said he's got one. And so I just want to let you know. Hey, Brother Chandler, we love you and God bless you. They tore up my office. They tore up my wife's office for Pastor's Appreciation Week. I went in there, and, and people kept telling me, going down the hall, they says, oh, Pastor, have you seen your office? I says, yeah, I just went in there, you know, last night. It was okay. He says, oh. They had that look on their face like, man, it's messed up in there. I thought, oh, no, man, what happened? Water pipes bust or... <clears throat> did the sheetrock fall from the ceiling or did somebody get mad at me and go in there and put graffiti on my walls or you know pastors you know you can have your enemies <laughs> <coughs> and but some big kids I think big kids <laughs> went in there and they just messed up my wife and my office they just put candy all over the floor and Hershey's and, mm, and all this graffiti hanging from the ceilings and welcome pastor and appreciation and so um, it's a mess in there right now I just left it but but I'm not going to bring my pets up here before the 31st. I'm going to sniff the floor myself and get me some candy bars. I'm not going to let the dog sniff it because he'll eat all my candy. I'm a true lifesaver. You don't believe it? You watch me every now and then. And man, I mean, I can chomp down. I'm a big kid when it comes to candy. Yes, ma'am. Huh? We'll clear our path and make it broad. Broad is the way that leads to candy. There ain't nothing like having a chocolate kiss. Every now and then. Praise God. Kit Kats. And I didn't talk about cats, C-A-T's. I'm talking about another cat. But if you can dim these headlights a little bit, I'd appreciate it a little bit. They're a little bit bright on my... Since I've had surgery, uh, I, I don't want to look like a movie star, so I won't wear my sunshades. Because if you want me to do an Elvis act, I, know, I promise you I'd fail. You'd be very disappointed. So if you can... This one over here is bad. It's the middle one. Yeah. Now, ever since I had that surgery, uh, uh, my eyes are real sensitive. Now, I went to the doctor the day. I've got good news. I have 20-20 vision without my glasses now. Now, some of y'all may ask the question, well, you must have that corrective, uh, corrective vision uh, surgery. No, I didn't. That's what's astounding to me because they told me, well, please, again, this thing is going up again. Somebody whittled with it. It's, it's probably in between them. Thanks. I don't have to have it. I got an iPad, Nobody and it's lit it. up. You're on live stream. You have to have, you have, to have it on, so you've got to be on live stream. Uh, okay, put it on a little bit. This one over here, can you control, or are they on the same? The same. Uh, Turn it up a little bit. It's all right. I just won't look up there. How about that? Go ahead. Turn it up. Okay. All right. Because it's live streamed. And uh, you live streamers out there, we're praying for you. Believe in God for great things for you. You that are watching, they're watching from Florida. They're watching from New Jersey, New York, uh, all the way down the East Coast. I know there's 
that, you know, and all the way to New Mexico area and all the way to California. So we are getting out there. And uh, we, uh, we're excited about live stream because and, uh, people, they send offerings from live stream. They, some of them pay their tithes from live stream. It is doing a well job. And uh, thank you, live streamers, for supporting the work of God. We do have bills just like everybody else. Uh, thank you for paying your tithes. That maybe every now and then I can buy a tithe. Because you pay a tithe. No. <laughs> so anyway, thank you. Thank you, live streamers. Praise God. So, and yesterday was such a great event. And again, I want to thank everybody that was involved in that. That was an awesome, awesome. The best plan, I think, people will give away clothes when they won't give away anything else. Right. And maybe some of them outgrow them or undergrow them. We won't talk about that. I still have under, I still have sizes smaller than me that my wife says, honey, won't you go and just put it in the garage and say, well, I, I, I can, but hopefully I might get back a few pounds less and maybe I can get into a few of those clothes and I hate to get rid of them. And we're all, we do have that second wardrobe. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Second wardrobe. In other words, when I lose my few pounds, I've got something I can get into and not have to worry about it. So anyway, uh, and again, uh, thank you uh, all, all of you that are guests today. We sure appreciate you coming and being a part of our service, and part of our makeup of our service, and uh, we want to welcome all of our guests. Let's give them a hand, would you? First time guest, second time guest, you are highly appreciated very much. I'd like to preach to you a little bit this morning. Is that okay with you? The Word of God will never return void. I have a feeling that you're not going to walk out just the same person that you came in. Because I'm going to encourage you today. Because I'm believing God for great things for you. We are looking at diverse people here today. We have some that have been divorced that are marred by divorce. We have some that are hurting financially. We have some that have great marriages, but maybe there's something that they need from God. We have some out here that are single, they're lonely. We have some that are single that are not lonely. We have some that desire a mate. We have some that don't. We have some out here that are poor for his finances they're struggling they don't have a place to stay they are struggling and uh, we have diversified people everywhere in this congregation we have some that don't feel like they fit but everybody fits at the Pentecostals of Estrop I'll tell you that right now everybody you come twice man we're going to suck you up and we'll be part of us is that alright that's just how it is <laughs> Amen. I meant that like a vacuum cleaner, so you can take that away. So anyway, it's good to have everyone here in the house of the Lord. Turn your Bibles now to 1 Samuel, the 22nd chapter, 1 and 2. My God, I feel the touch of God this morning. I may get off my nuts, folks. I get a little wild when I do that. So y'all just hang in there because we're going have, to have church, okay? I say we're going to have church. There is nothing like this apostolic touch of God in your life. Woo, I already feel it turning, man. My, 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 my. 1 Samuel 22, 1 and 2. David therefore departed hence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down to thither to him and everyone, everybody say everyone was in distress and everyone that was in debt everyone was discontent and gathered themselves up to him and became a captain over them and there were about uh, with him about 400 men bunch of losers 
but God, the essence of this sermon today. Bunch of losers. But God took losers and made men of God out of them. I'm telling you right now, this pastor made something talk about losers. And there's not one of us that wasn't losers at one time or the other in our lives. And we thought wrong. We didn't do it right. We were scoundrels. We were sneaky. Some of us liars, cheaters, and schemers. But when God got through with us, he changed the whole scenario. And do not discount yourself this morning of being a winner. Come on now, y'all can give me a Presbyterian nod or you can give me a Baptist clap or you can give me an apostolic. I told you it was various in here. There's an old saying, you may be seated. Father, bless. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> uh, Lord Jesus, bless the congregation that they have to hear this preacher. But you know what, Lord, it's not going to be me. That speaks very long. It's going to be the Holy Ghost. And I pray for every soul here. God, touch them. Don't let them be the same when they leave this place. Amen. I did kind of a study on this. Uh, and the title of my message is Self-Encouragement and the Anointing is all you need in the cave. Self-encouragement and the anointing is all you're going to need in the cave. You know what? We all talk about cavemen. And we've all been cavemen at one time. How many of you have ever said, man, just give me a closet, let me be hide, let me hide, let me get away from the trend of life and help me just lose myself and that I can gain myself. And every one of us here are that way. But how is it, and I'm going to talk about this today, how is it that God can take 400 losers that runs to the cave now, they're going to the cave because I'm tired, I'm weary, I'm fatigued, I'm tired of battles, I'm tired of hell on earth, I'm tired of my struggles, I'm just tired. And they run to the cave to hide. And they become cavemen. And, 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 there's an old saying that states this. Misery loves company. And they had 400 buddies that would not encourage them. They were all losers. They were all discouraged. They were all on the outs. And they were ready to throw in the towel. But just about the time that you're ready to throw in the towel, there's a God that knows where you're at. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the church. It doesn't matter if you're just a fresh member. It doesn't matter if you're just a charter member or you're just sitting on the pews just feeling this thing out. It doesn't really matter. It's God knows exactly where you're at. And let me tell you something else today. There is a timing for every person under the sun. There's, there's a timing for you that God has pinpointed an appointment for you to get what you need from him. 
Come on, everybody can say amen on that. Don't you discount yourself this morning and say, I'm a little person and nobody knows me. Nobody knows what I'm going through and nobody can help me. Honey, God can send a prophet to your house and open your door and tell you exactly what you need from God. It doesn't matter. There is also evidence in the first Samuel in the 22nd chapter 1 and 2 that we find David is on the run from King Saul. And that while he is hiding, people begin to come in and join themselves with David. But why would anyone be attracted enough to a man who was running for his life depressed, discouraged, and downtrodden. What was so inviting about a dark, deep, dreary cave where there is nothing but a bunch of pessimistic fugitives hanging out? Why would anybody want to hang with somebody like that? David had retreated here because he was hiding for his life. And he had 400 losers following him. Leaders, apostolic, anointed, MIT, you are always going to have somebody that's following you. You've got to have a plan no matter who you are because you've got babies behind you. You've got children behind you. You've got grandchildren behind you. And they're looking for answers in you. And you're it. You're the leader. David wrote a psalm while he was hiding in the cave. Psalms 13th chapter 1 through through 6 and you probably got it down. How long will thou forget me? Oh, Lord, forever, how long will thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemies be exalted against me? Consider and hear me, O oh God. Lighten, enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I like this part. You know, there's something always in the Word of God that is always positive at the end, tail end of everything. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. And the reason why everybody, now I'm going to talk to you the reason why everybody was attracted to David. Because He was a pessimistic, mystic fugitive. But listen, it was not because of that. He was like all the rest of them. He was battling hell with all the rest of them. But why would they cause 400 men to run in the cave with David? I don't understand why. Why would anybody want to follow a preacher that would tell a lie? Why would anybody want to follow a preacher that's down and out? And the only reason why you will follow this man of God is because when I'm down, I can still preach a positive message. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Let me tell you something, church. You get this Holy Ghost down inside of you and you let it stick there. Honey, hell can come against you and you still can have an encourager. You still can encourage those that are fugitives. It was not because he was a pessimistic 
fugitive that they were attracted to David. It was because he mastered the art of self-encouragement. He began to speak to himself. He began to talk to the Lord and said, yes, but I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Though I'm headed to a cave, I'm still a winner. I've still got something inside of me. Come on, church, I'm talking to somebody today. I'm preaching to somebody today. He said, I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Could it be? Just talking. I don't find any place in the Bible where God talked to an adulteress and a murderer and then after he's a man after my own heart I can't get that I, I, let me go again on that a murderer and a daughter Bathsheba we all know the story and Bathsheba's husband was on the front lines and killed we all know about that story right but after that God said he's a man after God's own heart murder fornicator he lied a little bit to cover up a little bit because he murdered could it be Y'all let me wonder a little bit in my mind. Could it possibly be that he was a man after God's own heart because he never lost his song? He never lost his worship attitude toward God. Just a, just a while ago. I can't find anybody in the Bible that he said, man after his God, a man after God's own heart. I never can, not anybody else. Now I've seen, there's none greater than John the Baptist. I've seen that. You know, I see where Enoch walked with God. I've seen that. All titles. But I'm going to tell y'all something. To me, all that's good, but there ain't none of them better than what God spoke to David about it's something to think about isn't it David had made up his mind that it's not in the cave to give up it's not in the cave to give in I'm in this cave only to reload I'm in this cave because I'm coming out different I'm in this cave because there's going to be glory there before I walk out of it I don't care where you go honey you can turn God can turn a cave into a glory place we as men we look at we, we, we look at this cave uh, uh, and we look at it and look at it again and observe it uh, and we, uh, Adulam, cave Adulam and we look at it we think man nobody wants to go to that cave that's a, that's a draw, dark dreary thing and nobody likes to go to those places like that and I don't think I really want to go myself but, but you know what God could take something dreary, something ugly. He can take 400 men and make warriors out of them. It doesn't matter the, the geographical location where they're at. I'm telling you, God can take a doolum here and make a glory place out of it. Let me just say this, that, that uh, uh, the term cave, a doolum, is called the glory of Israel. 
could it be that when we walk into the cave, we don't realize that it's going to be a place of glory for us. We go there to hide because it's dark and dreary and we know it won't fight back. It thinks like us. It's dark. It's dreary. Spiders come there. Rats come there. Bats come there. And you know what? We're not any better than and skeeters and all this stuff but I'm going to this cave because it's the only out for me and God says you don't understand when you come to Adula you are coming to the place where glory is fixing to be poured out in your life I don't think they would have went there if they really knew what this cave was all about. Listen to this. I did a study last night. Adulam also means refuge. They were headed because to a dark and dreary place but they didn't know what God knows. You come to P.O.B. Thinking, well, I'm going to get dressed in my best. And I'm going to come to P.O.B. I'm talking to the guests maybe today. Well, I'm going to come and just check them out. Honey, let me tell you something. You're coming to a place that you didn't realize really what is offered at P.O.B. There is glory in the house. There's the anointing in the house. There's power in the house. There, this is a place of a doolum. Yes, we have black caves. Yes, we have hurting people. Yes, we have people that don't have it together. But we have people that want to have it together. We have 20 maybe here that's coming to a doula, not realizing what doula's made up of. They come in with a losing theory. They come in hurting. They come in lying and cheating and scheming. But they walk out different because they have a presence of glory in the house. See, some of you don't know where you're heading. God has a plan. My God, I like this. I feel it, man. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet. No, I'm not going to try it. I'm not an Elvis. I ain't going to try it. Too old for that. I'd like to see Elvis up here now. 77 years old. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't he be cute? Mm-hmm. He might do tiptoe through the tulips. But that's about all he'll do, probably. Tiny Tim probably could keep up with him. Nice. Y'all on the young ones don't know what I'm talking about. You know, what really shocked me is the, I wanted to, I was going to preach on this, and I said, ah, I'm not getting what I want out of this message, so I'm going to look up a doodle. I'm going to, I want to see what really, what it means. What caused 400 people to go there? What made them, listen to me, what made them warriors? What transformed them in a cave? We're not in a cave here this morning. Some of you have run into caves. But just think about the scenario. Think about you going into a cave. I'm going because I'm upset. I'm mad. Me and my husband had a fight. She cussed me out. I cuss her out. And I'm tired. I hope my church members don't do that. We've all done that, though. I mean, you know, we've been... Let's just put it this way. You don't, go to, you don't go to the place where you're losing character. You're not doing that, but you, 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 you had an argument and you feel like, man, I'm, I'm down and out and I don't know where to go to. I don't know who to talk to. I don't know. And you go to your adulam. Let me 
me tell every one of y'all something. If you'll just be sensitive enough to God, just enough to God to realize that God has a doodle for you, you're thinking you're running there to get away, but you're really running there to get to. And you're going there because God says, I've got something I'm going to give you, and you don't even realize where you're headed. You're headed there to hide. But in the hiding place, there is no secret place in the kingdom. There's no hiding grounds from God. And I'll tell every one of y'all, y'all can go ahead and sneak around all you want to. You can go to your adulam if you want to, but I'm telling you, there's a God that knows exactly where you're at. He has the way to tune into you and bring you back to the glory where you thought you was hiding. God's going to bring glory in the house. And when I come to Pentecost, they told me this. I don't remember this. I think I came the first time with muscle shirt on. I wanted to flex my muscles. I was a little bit better. Used to lift weights, karate and all that stuff, but I probably can't jump quite that high to do enough of that anymore. You know, it's kind of left me, you know. Kind of a little bit more bald-headed now. And kind of house is getting bigger. I make excuses. I'm just getting a bigger house so I'm getting more God knocking. <laughs> I never forget my I'll tell you what my, my my pastor's wife man she skint me pretty good she said T you learn to treat your wife better you're going to stay one more year in discipleship class I said oh sister me said that exact thing but that's about how I felt you know <clears throat> many times I went to the hunting place thinking I was getting away and that's where God met me your hiding place becomes the presence of God that's the essence of my message now why would anybody want to follow David this, this, that's another essence of my message the reason why they wanted to follow David leaders listen to this, this is your part okay people that are leaders. They, you're a leader of your home. You're a leader of your children. You're a leader in a Sunday school classroom. You're a leader here. You're a leader there. People are following you. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? The reason why they followed David was this. is because he had the ability when he was down and he was in a cave amongst 400 losers he still had the ability to say, I'm coming out. I'm just reloading. I'm here just for a season. And guess what? If you want to be a part of me, you're not going to be a loser anymore. We're going to walk out of here in unity. And when we do get out of this place, we're all going to be warriors and we're all going to be winners the Bible speaks when they came out of the cave they were warriors of the faith they were no more losers I don't want to get ahead of myself because I got some statistics here and I can read now even with my headlights Now, God, give us more like David's. Somebody that can walk out as a leader and say, I'm not going to stay down. I'm not going to quit. I'm in here to win. 
it wasn't, let me tell you something. It's not great leaders. It's not great warriors or anybody that's important society. It's all about those who were in distress and all those that were in debt, all of those that were discontent. God made a choice to pick them up to where they're at. The distress had to move into their freedom area eventually. They had to get out of Adula because God says, I'm going to put you in battle. I'm going to prepare you for greater things. Who wants to live in a life of distress? Who wants to be hounded by oppressed enemies? But is the incredibly how people don't want to give up the oppression of an enemy. The devil wants to put you in a stronghold. If the truth is known, we like footholds and we allow our sins to keep us there and prolong the bondage. So if God has allowed you to be in bondage of oppression, you need to fill your life, fill it out. And fill it with good things, godly things. I like the scripture where uh, Philippians 4, 8 says, whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are noble, things that are just, and whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, and whatever things are good of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be anything praiseworthy, meditate upon these things. And I have a feeling when David was in Adullam, he said, I've got to think on these things because I've got to come out. Your only savior is you're changing your mindset. Change your thinking. The battle begins in your mind. Wherever you're dwelling is where you're going to be controlled and where you're headed. I heard a statement one time. Listen to this. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Now, don't listen to me. Please don't take me wrong. I don't hang around preachers that are running 20 members' churches unless I can help them. And they'll let me help them. They're not going to increase their ability or their influence upon me to downsize me of how I'm thinking. Show me your friends and show me the people you hang with and I'll show your future. This pastor here, he hangs with winners. I have a Nathan Scoggin in my life. Pastor a good church. Call him periodically. Pentecost of Katie, the pastor there, a couple of them there, I call them. Hang with people that are winners. Ken Gurley, call him. Always have a word. The Bible says take no thought for tomorrow. You don't know what's going to hold in tomorrow. Take every thought of captivity and obedience of Christ and you're a new creature. Fill your life with new things, new thoughts, new ways, new standards, and new priorities. Get something fresh all the time. If you remain idle, going back to your old ways, that's what you'll do. And the old bondage you return to seven times will be stronger and hell will still be nipping at your heels. You got to hate oppression. You got to hate where you're at or you won't leave it. I say it again. You got to hate where you're at or you will not leave it. What I pray all the time, God, you make them miserable. 
right in there wherever their little fancy sitting you make them miserable because if they like where they're at they'll never change in kingdom things I don't know about you but I, I still have men that I, I, I rubbed shoulders with back when I was home in 1980 to 85 and 90 that back at my home church they're still the same people they were then they're still churchgoers non-involvements don't go here don't go there don't do anything different non-involved and guess what they're still doing the same thing they did 25 30 years ago John Maxwell said it y'all know what it is if you always do what you've always done and you'll always get what you've always gotten So I go to my home church. No names mentioned. Hey, man, how you doing? Well, I'm doing just fine. Still snaggle to. Got a few hairs missing compared to what he used to. What's going on in your life? Well, we just, we just uh, hang in there. God, I hate that. Don't tell me that. Don't, I don't like to hear that. Just hang in there. If your pastor ever tells you that, he's backslidden. Well, I'm just hanging in there. Bats hang upside down, baby, and I ain't, I'm not going to relate with them. And they love to scoom somebody's neck, suck the blood out of you, suck you dry. Hangers will suck you dry. Don't get in the habit of being a hanger. Well, I'm just hanging in there. Well, if you're hanging in there, I'll hear you the first time, but I'll pray you through the next time. Where you're not hanging in there no more. And if I go a second round, you're still hanging in there. I'm going to kick you in the shins and say, get up and pray through. Jesus is coming soon. And God's not coming after those that hang in there. So if anybody's just hanging in there, don't come up here and tell me all your aches and pains and aches and pains, service after service. Man, let somebody lay their hands on your dead head and get prayed through and get a healing. Um, come on now, let me preach a little bit. I'm getting tired of everybody coming back, coming same old record. Same old broken record. Well, I need a healing. Next Sunday, I need a healing. Next Sunday, need a healing. Wednesday night, they may come or may not. Well, I need a healing. Good. Come on Monday night prayer meetings. Maybe because you got a lot of hell in your house. Where's your power? Some of y'all need to go to your house, anoint every doorpost in your house, kick out the devil, open the door and say, devil, you're not allowed in here anymore. What has happened to Holy Ghost stamina? What has happened to Holy Ghost anointed men of God that will stand up and look the devil in the eye? And say, you can't have my home. You can't have my church. You cannot have my family members. You're not going to pull out Sally Sue. You're not going to pull her out of church, devil. Take your ugly hands off now. I was blind for a month I didn't sit home and cry and whimper I didn't man I couldn't see and it bothered me I thought man I can't see I was like you I was wanting to see with that bright eye here what do you do when you have an eyeball that explodes detach from the front and detach from the back I believe God and God touched me 
he used the doctors to help me but I astounded the doctors when I come out and said man I don't need glasses anymore well we didn't change we didn't take a cataract off of your eyeball to make you see better it just it's, you ought to have glasses still no I don't have glasses and don't need them and they're my way Maybe it's because I've been in that cave and I've talked myself out of hell. I've talked myself. I'm not staying here. I'm just getting geared up for another round, my friend. Everybody needs this Holy Ghost experience. Everybody needs the power of God. Everybody needs a fresh anointing. Everybody needs a new arm. Because when you come out, if you make up your mind, I'm going to come out, I'm not going to be the same again. Raise your hands right now and love him. And I think this altar needs to be filled. This altar needs to be filled. You know what? If you ain't been full of the Holy Ghost, you need God right now. You need it. You ain't talked in tongues. You need that experience. I can say that at a Pentecostal church. I may not be able to say that much in some kind of denominal church because some of them don't want to hear that. But honey, it's the book of Acts experience. Honey, I don't go to I don't go to Romans to find my experience. I go all the way back to the book of Acts where they laid hands on the sick and they shall recover and they lay hands on they got the Holy Ghost and power. Altars are open. Come on, mamas and daddies. Come on, get a hold of God. I wonder who needs the Holy Ghost this morning. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You need something and you know you need it. Come on up here. I'll nicely, hear me again, I'll nicely lay my hands on you and anoint you with all and let the Holy Ghost touch you one more time. The baptismal tank is open. You need to get baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. You'll never get your sins washed away by any other way. But Jesus' name, baptism. It's in the book, sir or ma'am. Go back to the book of Acts. You'll read all about it. Come on, mama. Come on, daddy. Come on, children. Who's going to get baptized today? Who's going to get baptized in Jesus' name today? Y'all don't knock me down running up here on the, up, up, up on the, where the store is. Come on. Come on. You need to get baptized in Jesus' name. You want your sin remitted? Washing away, calling upon the name of the Lord? Come on. I don't know about you, but I'd rush to that tank. Baptize me in Jesus' name. The Holy Ghost is waiting on you, sir, ma'am. Hey, I'm in the book. I'm in the book. I'm in the Bible. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting. It appeared unto them clothed in tongues as a fire set up on each one of them. Not one of us left out. Raise your hands right now. All over the house. Go ahead and love him. God's going to work with you, sir. God's going to work with you, ma'am. Give it, give it, give it all. Does anybody need the pastor to pray for him? I'll pray for you. Oh, I have such a burden today. I want God to reach down and touch you, sir, ma'am. Don't leave here today untouched. Can we worship Him right now? Go ahead and love Him. Love Him with all your heart. Let God do some transformation. Because when you come out of the cave, you'll never be the same again. 
because it's a place of glory. I will give you all. I will give you all. All is what you ask of me. I'll give you all of it, God. Oh. If my sacrifice Jesus is in the house. Anything can happen. Oh, God. When Jesus is in the house, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Hallelujah. Quickly, I want to say something. Five minutes after dismissal, it is not the best is not your time. It's our guest time. We are to greet our guests. When I say dismissed, don't come to me and talk to me. Don't tie me up. It's my time to give to all of the guests of this church. It's your time that you give away your love. And our guest, thank you for coming. You mean everything to us. Just give them a hand. You mean everything to us. We teach Bible studies here. We're very involved in outreach. We're very involved. Now, have you ever had a puppy dog? I've got a dog at the house. It don't even belong to me. It's my daughter's dog. I've adopted it, or let's put it this way, taken up residency in my home for the past year and a half because the dog didn't have no place to go and the mama didn't love her no more. So I, I took her in. No, not really. <laughs> and that dog, in the morning when I wake up to drink my coffee, I don't want no dog in my lap licking me. I, I say, it's my time. And I push her back. I don't slap her, hit her, knock her down. Said, go on, get off the couch and go play with the ball. Go, go. You know, we throw the ball in the mornings, man. That, throw that ball and it hits the wall and it just, she's the only one that'll run after the ball. And so, guest, you may feel like our church is licking you. Because we love you so much. So if you get tired of us, forgive us because you're going to get a lot of handshakes because we love people. We're very adamant about our guests feeling comfortable. So in that part, if you get handshakes, there's some wash out there that you can squeeze when you go out. Wash your hands. All of, I, I do that. I, I wash the fellowship off my hands. We all go out to eat together. Our guests go with us if they choose to. We don't force nothing on nobody. Nobody is exempt in this church. Who's been new lately? Who's, who's come to our church lately? New. Juan, where's Juan? Where's Juan at? Juan went and ate with us last week. Brand new. The George couple back here. They're not... They're new to a lot of people here, but they're not new to me. They're coming back. Carried them out to dinner. Enjoyed the tickets out of it. Loved it, man. Why? 
because I want everybody to feel very important. No clicks. Boy, I'll preach that out, man. I do. We're, we don't want that around here. So right now, it's their time. You dismiss all our guests. Got some here that's been coming some. So I'm going to dismiss you. It's not your time. It's their time. So go shake the hands of our guests and make them feel so welcome. Love our guests. Okay? Right now. You're dismissed. Check. All right, guys, I got a real quick announcement. Um, the 4th of July, we had a fireworks show, and uh, pastor asked me if I could get, get together a group of people and do a fireworks show for New Year's. And uh, right now, I'm just trying to get an idea as to who, who would all would want to be involved in that. Um, I need, a, like, a minimum of 10 people at, right now. But uh, if you could, just get with me after, sir, after, after service and... Uh, I'll get with y'all and get phone numbers and exchange emails and stuff like that so we can get information passed out. I'd appreciate it, guys. Thank you.
think I need that surgery to happen. <laughs>
bunch of we're a bunch of ex cave dwellers in here. <laughs> Attention, everyone. We are baptizing two in Jesus' name this morning, this afternoon. Go down the water of your grave. Not in titles, but in the name. The only name given among men whereby we must be saved. Hey, listen. Can I say something today? Uh, being that we have a good group in here, y'all listen to me, okay? All that ones at the door over here. Can I have your attention? Can I have everybody's attention right now, just for a few minutes? Everybody in the hallway, I need your attention. Y'all listen to me. I'm not pulling for a big offering. I'm pulling for something that comes from your heart. I believe today, Josh, Sherilyn, stand up. Put your hand up like this. He, he's starting a job tomorrow, but it'll probably be two weeks before he gets a check. I wonder if there's anybody that'd like to slip him a 20 or a 10 or a 5 or even more. Him and Sherilyn. Honey, write him a $50 check from me. Listen, I believe in taking care of your own when they're really trying to do what's right. So if you can, if you can give him something, please do it. You don't have to go through me or anything. If you want, just give him cash. If you want it recorded, just tell me what the recording is, and I'll, I'll write it down. You can run it through the church account if you want to, whatever. Love and appreciate everybody. Church folks, um, we're going to have a couple baptisms, but they really want it to be private. So if y'all could kind of move out into the foyer right quick so we can go ahead and do the baptisms. Yeah, can y'all go ahead and drop the screen? Can you drop the screen? Okay, thanks.
beginning. Genesis 1 and 1, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. By the spoken word of God, God created the whole universe, the world that we live in. The trees that we see outside, they came forth by the word of God. And John chapter 1 says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Verse 14 says, and that word was made flesh and it dwelt among us. And I'm glad to tell you tonight that I know what his name is. Into this place of 